what is going on everybody welcome to the channel germany g here and i am proud to present finally the long-awaited alpine dlc i am on ellengrad it is an absolutely gorgeous uh gorgeous morning here nine almost nine o'clock uh, in the morning here on the map ellengrad uh, a european alpine european map and as you can see here in front of me, and judging by the title of this video, you are here to see the equipment walkthrough. The entire, uh, a tour of the entire, uh, every piece of equipment that we have now in this Alpine DLC. Uh, small tractors, some large tractors, all this is still category, categorized as small tractors. Uh, mowers, wind rowers, attachments, more mowers. Uh, balers, drills, harrowers, cultivators, wind rowers, uh, loading wagons. There is a lot of equipment on um, on this DLC. So if you guys are looking for stuff, uh, vehicles, uh, equipment, and a really cool map to start playing or even uh, subsidize your farming simulation so far, this is going to be the perfect DLC for you. All right, so let's see what we got. Sorry about that. Just setting up my computer, getting things. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, I leased all the equipment here, so I can't give you the prices uh, just yet. But I do have all the information aside from that manufacturer type, where to find it in the shop, uh, required horsepower, working widths, all that nitty gritty business. I think I'm just going to start off with these beauties right here in front of me. I've got all of these are uh, co coincidentally enough. These are all small tractors. Uh, first and foremost, something the long-awaited cabless version of the Burr 6105. This is a tractor that I know a lot of people have been waiting for. A lot of people have been looking for this. Uh, small tractors, 100 horsepower, top speed of 32 kilometers an hour or 26 miles an hour. These are some really great looking models, folks. I'm telling you right now, these are going to be some beautiful tractors uh, if you guys are looking for some really, really nice stuff, look absolutely no further than what we have here. This little bundle of joy, as a matter of fact, was one that I was uh, looking forward to the most, as a matter of fact. 68 horsepower, Ridgy Track SKE 50, electric. Yep, the first electric tractor that they have here on Farming Simulator. It's pretty, pretty cool. Like I said, 68 horses. Uh, this tractor, as a matter of fact, is the only one uh, that I've noticed, aside from the Burr, that does not have all-wheel steering. So I was a little bit disappointed in that, but like I said, it's electric, 68 horses, and uh, it's looking it's looking nice. Like, it's, it's pretty sweet. I can even show you just what these models look like on the inside. And as you see there on my HUD... It shows a battery instead of a gas gauge or a fuel gauge. And uh, these models are really, really nice. So I don't want to spend too much time on any one of these, really. I just want to kind of highlight the ones that I'm really stoked about. So the 68 horsepower Ridgy Trek SKE 50, followed up by its bigger brother, not much bigger brother, the Ridgy Trek SKE, uh, SKH, I'm sorry, 75. 110 horsepower, 40 kilometers an hour, 26 mile an hour speed. Still looking really, really good. All of these models are super clean. I'm probably going to say that about 500 times. Now, this blue one here is also rig a rigid track, but you can change the colors on these. And I didn't check on the other two, on the 50 or the 75, but uh, the larger one here, the uh the lin track i believe this is the yeah this is actually the ridge this is the ridge track this here is the lin track so the ridge track let's go ahead and find this one the ridge track skh 15 uh yeah 150 the 150 uh 100 horsepower still considered a small tractor 40 kilometers an hour full color palette on the shop so i just chose the new holland blue i think that looks really nice on that one and here is the lin track 
Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Lin Linder Lin track 130. 136 horses, 50 kilometers an hour, which works out to about 32 kilometers an hour. You see the way these uh, the way these grills are set up and these lights, like it looks really really cool. All wheel steering on this one here. Um, you have your all wheel steering front, rear, crab left, crab right, and then your standard with just the front axle. So all of those different steering modes and um, yeah, I, the Lin track itself does not, from what I saw, come with uh, full color palette selection. It was red and orange, if I'm not mistaken, but it's still pretty dang sweet. This little bundle of joy right here, uh, I'm really going to try to not butcher these names up too bad. Uh, the Abbey, Abbey, we'll go with that one, the TT281 Plus, considered a small tractor. And I know there's been a couple of videos and live streams done with this one. This thing is just super utilitarian. Can use it for anything and everything. Uh, let's go ahead and see what kind of horsepower we have on this one. Top speed of 40 kilometers an hour, power 109 horses. Really, really sweet. And this one here is another one that I was really looking forward to. The Linder Unitrack 122 L Drive. Shop category, miscellaneous. Uh, let's see, horsepower, 122 horses, top speed, 40 kilometers an hour. Now, there was actually something that I wanted to have a little bit of a... We'll go ahead and do this one here. Yep, the Abbey. Um, I wanted to use this for the next piece that I'm going to be showing you here. Next few pieces. Let's go ahead and hook up here. All right. So, the next piece of equipment I want to show you, we'll go ahead and just talk about the trailer here real fast. A nice, simple little trailer, the Buckman MHAL 4320-35. Shop category, miscellaneous, nothing really too fancy about this trailer. Super clean, super clean, super simple to use. You can use your um, fastening straps here. Uh, I don't know if you want to transport bales. I guess if you're just moving some pallets around the around the farm, you can do that. I don't know if you can actually fold the sides down here yet, but uh, I like it with the sides up. But I'm going to go ahead and use it for the actual mower here. And this was one piece of equipment that I thought was super sweet and couldn't wait to uh, check out. As a matter of fact, the Abbey, and I have one of the one of the features there put on it. The Abbey CC66 category. Uh, in the shop, mowers, power 18 horses, speed 9 kilometers an hour, 5 miles an hour, and working width of 2 meters. I'm just going to go ahead and hop into this one. Jump into it like a vehicle. Unfortunately, you can't see your legs when you're working this puppy. Uh, I don't own the land, but I have the uh, metal rollers on it, which look pretty sick. You can have standard wheels, wide wheels, uh, standard rollers like this, and wide rollers, which is double basically wides or duels on this thing just wanted to go ahead and pop that one into gear and just mess around here this one is really really cool I don't own the land obviously so I can't do anything but uh, yeah this one looks pretty cool just trying to drive it back on here there we go power that down make sure she's fastened down boom yeah, there we go. That was pretty darn sweet. Let's go ahead and head over here and get some uh, land field working equipment out of the way here. First up we have here is the Servo 25. Let's go ahead and find that here. The Servo 25 is obviously a plow for you guys who don't know. Pottinger Servo 25. Uh, required horsepower, 85 horses. So it's going to be perfect for uh, everything except for the electric rigid track there. And it's got a working width of 1.2 meters. This is a pretty sweet little piece of equipment. I love the red and the yellow. One of my favorite combos. We actually had quite a few pieces of Pottinger equipment on uh, the farm that I grew up on. So that's kind of cool. Next we have up, next up, we have the Pottinger Synchro 3020 Cultivator. Looks like it's got seven heads on there. Required horsepower, 90 horses, 3 meter working width. Another Pottinger piece here. A lot of Pottinger equipment on this uh, DLC. 
looking really, really nice. Man, I, I tell you, this these models look amazing. Next up, Pottinger Terra Disc 3001. Obviously, the sides are folded up here just a little bit. This is a disc harrower. 95 horses working width of three meters. I like that black on that. The black really sets it off. And I think this next piece of equipment is really, really cool. It just looks super high tech. The Pottinger Aerosem 3002 ADD. Uh, let's go ahead and find this one. There was a special little. And the Lion 303. The Lion 303 and the Aerosem 3002. Uh, the Lion, if I'm not mistaken, was the land or the ground prep piece there. The roller. And then the drill is the Aerosem. It's under Cedars. Uh, required power, 165 horses, working width of 3 meters. And it's got a seed holding capacity or a tank capacity of 1,250 liters. Boy, Pottinger, I tell you, they know how to make some good-looking equipment. That's pretty darn cool. All right. Next off, next off, next up. Uh, let's go ahead and take some of these mowers. All right, let's see here. First up, we have the uh, Sepp Knössel uh, F240. A drum mower. Nothing too out of the ordinary with this one. Looks really good. Uh, yeah, the F240 mower, obviously required power, 40 horses, working with 2.4 meters. So this one right here is going to be perfect for that little electric ridgy track. Perfect for that one there. And here we have the Pottinger Nova Alpine 261. Let's see if I found that one. The 261, obviously another mower, working with 2.6 miles, uh, 2.6 meters. <laughs> uh, required horsepower, 45 horses. It's some really, really nice looking equipment. This is also going to be one that you can uh, hang on to your Abbey here. Next up, got a little bit of a bundle. Well, not next up. Let's go ahead and knock out the rest of these mowers. Spoke too fast here. Uh, the Pottinger, what do we have here? The Pottinger Novacat 301 Alpha Motion. Obviously, we have uh, yet another mower here, an Alpine mower. This one here is definitely the larger one. Now, I did try to attach these two together uh, so you can kind of get a, a triple deck, if you will. Um, that is not possible. See, there's no rear attachment here or second attachment. Uh, required horsepower on this one is 60 horses working with 3.1. Next up, check this puppy out right here. This one looks really nice. The Pottinger Nova Disc 812. Required horsepower, 90 horses. Working with 8.1, so not too bad at all. You're going to get a lot of grass done on, um, I say the hills. I want to say the hills. I mean all those hills up there south of the farm or south of the town, I should say. And uh, there is plenty, plenty, plenty of grass to mow on this map. So it's a good thing that they gave us quite a bit of grass working equipment. Next up, we have, uh, what do we have, four attachments or so, something like that, four attachments for the Linder here, the CC, uh, I said the CC, I think I misspoke there. Oh, the, the Unitrack, sorry about that. The other one is the CC. Yeah, the mower is the CC. So the Unitrack, here we have a loading wagon. Let's go ahead and check that. That one out. Where are we? The brand is Lond. It's Swiss. I hope I'm pronouncing that even partially correct. The Swiss Elite S31. Uh, loading wagon, 70 horsepower, 12,000 liter capacity. Now, obviously, you guys can see that it's not like our standard, which has the pickup in the front. It actually has the pickup in the rear. 
And the unload is also in the rear. It's pretty cool. 12,000 liter capacity. And basically, it's just a little bit of a backpack attachment for this guy right here. Back it under there. X hooks up and you drive away, do what you need to do. Next up, we have, this is the manure spreader for the Linder. Uh, the manure spreader, the brand is a Stochel. Uh, Mist Trail 3400SR. Uh, 12 meter working width and a 3,400 liter capacity. So nothing that is going to break the bank or set any records, but uh, it does have a side discharge here. So it's not your usual rear discharge. It actually discharges out of the side. This thing feeds, got the conveyor belt feeds into this thing. The big wheel rotates and the little one feeds, basically slings it into the big wheel and then it slings it out over into the field. Pretty cool, 3,400. I feel like if you're using this one, you're gonna be refilling it a lot, especially if you have some larger animal pins. Uh, next up for the Unitrek, we have a, um, a slurry spreader. Uh, we have the Agrar ADF 3200. And a uh, slurry digest, digest it tank, uh, 3200 liter, 10 meter working width. Now, this one I saw in the shop, I noticed in the shop that it comes with uh, three different attachments. Uh, your initial attachment is going to be a kick plate, basically, and that kick plate gives you a 10 meter working width. Then it comes with this really, really cool uh, gun, essentially. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gun that you can control and it shoots it off either basically over to the side, either side, left side, right side, off to the back. And uh, that's got a five meter uh, spray working width. And then it also has a drag hose. And the drag hose has a eight meter, if I'm not mistaken, an eight meter working width, a big, long, green, eight meter wide drag hose. But I figure I'd at least show you the one with the gun because that looks pretty cool. And let's see, if I'm not mistaken, the last attachment for the Linder Unitrek is just a platform um like a, a a platform trailer now for this one you're going to be probably transporting pallets um throw some eggs in there uh crates with saplings if you need uh but the cool thing about this one is that you can actually put a three point with a pto and hydraulics on the back of here and if you so wish you can actually have it without the platform and just the orange frame or red frame and a three-point hitch uh, for secondary attachments. So it's a kind of a, it's a multi-use little setup here with the lender. The lender, if you have the lender uh, or two lenders, as a matter of fact, on your farm, you could probably get away with only one other tractor and uh, be perfectly fine on this farm. Uh, with, oh, I'd say, just about everything on this DLC. Let's see what we've got next. Banged out all the mowers. Oh, yeah. Let's do some tedders. Now, the tedders over here around the corner. Next up, now that we have some tedders, uh, the Pottinger Alpine Hit 4.4H. The 4.4H, working with 4.4 meters, required horsepower, 30 horses. Pretty simple. Pretty simple layout, not too bad at all. And here we've got its bigger brother, the Pottinger Hit 8.9T, 8.9 meters, working uh, 8.9 meters working with and required horsepower of 60. Let me double check that there. 60 horses. All right, cool. Now we can move on over to our. Uh, our wind rowers. Here we go. Uh, the wind rowers. First one up here. Very, very, very small wind rower. SIP. The favorite 254. This is a very small wind rower. 2.5 meter working width and required horsepower of only 20 horses. Now, this is going to be something that uh, 
if you're not looking to break any land speed records or do any monster farming as large as you can actually do on this map, this is going to be a really great tool, a uh, really great tool for the farm, uh, especially on this terrain. Next up here, we have a little bit more of a futuristic wind rower thing going on. This looks pretty darn cool. This thing here is going to load from the rear, if I'm not mistaken. Or this is a front attachment. I believe this is a front attachment. Oh, we're going to have to figure that one out. Let's see if we can't pull up a tractor here real fast. I wonder if this is a front or a, because if it's a rear, it's a little bit odd. It should be a front. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine that it's a front. It's got to be a. It's or I wouldn't imagine it's a rear. It's got to be a front. That is. That is pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go with a front wind rower on that one because of the pickup there. You have a driving direction and the roller is in front as well, so it makes sense to have a front wind rower there. Let's turn that off again. Uh, then we have this little guy right here, and I actually didn't need to turn that off. Let's go ahead and pull this one over because I saw a saw something really really cool when I hooked up earlier. The animation, the folding and unfolding animation of this thing here. Let's go ahead and check this one out. We have a uh, Pottinger Top 342 uh, wind rower, required horsepower 35, working width 3.5. Now, as you can see, there are no actual arms. Oh, I got stuck there. There's no actual arms attached to the wind rower. So this is transport mode, and then when you unfold, let's go ahead and lower it, for example, you go to unfold this, and they actually, assemble, for you, that is pretty sweet, mind you, you can do it when it's in the up position, but I chose not to so that was a really really cool animation so it doesn't show it now it's too bad that you can't do it manually but it's cool that it does it automatically it is pretty sweet so the front two or whatever two are in the front those are obviously stored there but to make it easier the other what eight six or eight are stored right there that is pretty cool that is pretty 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 cool all right, next up, we've got some Baylas. Baylas, Baylas. Here we have the Pottinger Impress 125F Pro. And right next to it, we have its much larger brother, the Pottinger Impress 125FC Pro. Now, both of these are round balers. Uh, single axle, double axle. Let's go ahead and see what the horsepower is on here. Both under baling technology. 120 horses required on the uh, F Pro, and 160 horsepower required on the FC Pro. Now, obviously, you can see just the difference here between the two, besides one being single axle, the other being double, is that the FC Pro also bails, uh, also wraps for you. So it bails, wraps, and then unloads for you. Now, there is one really cool attachment that uh, really can't. It doesn't have a different color or anything, but this bar right here is an extra that you can buy in the shop, so you can actually have it on or not. Uh, it does cost extra. I think it costs two thousand dollars or currencies extra, whatever you have your currency setting at. This bar right here is a a an ender bar, a turn up ender bar, and all that means basically is. It's going to take all of your bales and turn them on their end so that when you're bailing these hills, these steep terrains that you see all around me here, your bales aren't going to roll away on you. Now, you can not have that if you want. 
And if you're bailing on a steep hill and you have the bales pointing downhill, just unload them downhill and catch them down at the bottom of the hill if that's what you wanted to do. I myself would rather have that the bales stay in one place. Now, I don't know about how much I'm going to be playing this map, but I definitely, 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 I usually don't round bale on, a, on my maps because they have a tendency to roll away. But I think with this baler, I'm probably going to give it a lot of use because of this um, on end, uh, turn on ender bar. Uh, that's I think that's pretty cool right there. So I'm really looking forward to testing this one out. So uh, the Pottinger Impress 125 F Pro, 120 horses, and the Pottinger 125 FC Pro, baler, wrapper, uh, turn on end bar, 160 horses. And now we come to our last three final pieces of equipment. All three, bingo, bango, bongo, loading trailers. Loading, yeah, loading trailers. The Pottinger Boss Alpine 251. The Pottinger Euro Boss 330T. And the Pottinger Faro 4010. This thing looks really, really cool. Got the Faro, the Euro Boss, and the Alpine Boss right here. Boss Alpine. Alpine, Alpine. Uh, the 251 here <clears throat> uh, is going to require 60 horsepower and has a capacity of 16,100. It's not too bad for an Alpine uh, forge wagon. The Euro Boss. I really like the name there. The Euro Boss is going to require 90 horsepower and has a capacity of 21,300. These things look really good. And the Pottinger Faro is going to require 130 horses. So the only tractor that you're going to be able to pull, if you're only using Alpine DLC equipment on this map, the only vehicle that's going to be able to pull this, um, the only vehicle that's going to be able to actually pull this is going to be the, um, I'm try actually trying to see if it's the Linder, no, the Linder is not even going to be able to pull it, the Linder, Lintrack 130, the only one that's going to be able to pull it is the Ridgey Track SKH 150, 150 horses, um, but it's going to be, it's going to be working, it's going to be working at 150 horses. That's going to be a tough one. So yeah, the Faro has uh, requires 130 horses and has a 26,000 liter capacity. There we have it. All right, folks. Let's see here. If I'm not mistaken, that was what 30 pieces of equipment, something like that. Quite a few pieces of equipment on this uh, Alpine DLC. Um, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, make sure you comment below if you have any questions for me. I'll be sure to answer them in a quick, timely, courteous manner. Alpine DLC, full equipment tour. Germany G here. Make sure you guys sub to the channel if you haven't already done so. I live stream every Monday and Friday afternoon. Hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Take care. And I'll catch you on the next one.